Mortal Online 2 is a hardcore open world sandbox MMORPG developed by Starvolt. And this game is hard. And you start out in an area called Haven, which is a small island where there's a, a simple tutorial, there's no PvP, and all the enemies are weakened. So it's a nice place for a new player. But then when you leave, you're dropped into the real world with everyone else. There's no quests, there's no guidance, and the entire map is full loop PvP. And this point is the great filter of Mortal Online 2. You have this huge map and you're playing with all these experienced players, but you know nothing. You've got no money, you've got no skills, and you've got no game knowledge. And as soon as you leave the town, you can be PvP'd and lose what little you have. And this is where lots of players quit. So I wanted to make a new player guide on what to do once you leave Haven. Step-by-step -step guide to get you started. I'm going to go through it from the very start where you're, you're hitting zombies with your starter sword to leveling up, getting your horse, getting your skills, getting your build online, and then progressing into like the mid game where you know where things are on the map. I'll show you some things around that you can, that you can go to and things you can do. And I did all of this in like a day and a half from scratch with a brand new character. And, you know, I recorded it all, so I'm going to show it all in this video. And if this has helped and there's any other sort of guides you want to see on Mortal Online 2, like a mage guide or a, a footy guide or a crafting guide, let me know in the comments because I would be happy to make more. I love this game, so let's get into it. So here I am, a brand new character. I just left Haven at glory level 2, which is the earliest you can leave, and I left with zero gold. You know, I'm not going to go to any house. I'm not going to join any guild. I'm going to do this from scratch like you would. Let's start. First thing we will do is we'll go and find the task building. These are in every city. And for this guide, we'll be in Fabinum. If you're not sure where it is, just ask around in the town. Use VoIP, use text to chat. Just ask people where it is. It's, it, there's one in every town. Once you've found it, you're looking for the taskmasters. There is a hunting taskmaster and a soldier taskmaster at the time of making this video. And these are amazing ways to level up and make gold. The way they work is they give you a mission. You go do it, you get rewards. You gain rep with the task leaders and you can take on better tasks for better rewards. So let's take the basic tasks. It will be probably zombies for the soldiers and then probably something like little pigs for the hunter. So take both of those tasks. They'll go in your inventory as a task and you can track how many of them you've done. And on your, your hood, your heads up display, you'll see where they are. So let's go do them. One big piece of advice is don't take out more than what you need. Everything in your bank is safe, but everything on your person outside of your starter sword, your spell book, and your equipped trinkets and cape can be stolen when you die. You're not in Haven anymore. So if you're going to fight the walking dead in the graveyard, you don't need crazy armor. You don't need a really good sword. So I personally, as a new player, would go out naked with a starter sword or some basic sword from the vendor if you want to do it faster. So let's do it. Let's go out and kill your required amount of zombies. I would focus on the, the soldier tasks because they're, they respawn fast. They're always up. The hunter tasks are sometimes harder to find. They get farmed a lot more for, for materials. So if you can do the hunter ones alongside it, cool. If not, focus on your soldier ones. Okay, so you head to the graveyard and you're fighting them. You take their heads and you can take their bodies and butcher them too for, for bone and meat and materials. This all sells. So I would, I would take everything you can. And then once you've defeated the required amount, go back to town and hand in your tasks. Go and sell your heads and everything in your inventory and you should make a few gold. Now you have to repeat this basic task a few times before you can unlock the more advanced ones. And that's good because we want to earn this basic gold a little bit more so we can get a horse. So once you've done this task a few times, you'll have like five or six gold in your bank minimum. Now you can go and buy a horse on the outskirts of every town. There is something called a pet broker and you can go and buy a horse here. If you are, if you learn taming in Haven and you, you or you're a tamer and you've read the taming book, you can go and try and find a horse and tame one yourself. But with no knowledge of the map and no skills, it can be a hard experience walking out looking for one. So I would personally just suggest to buy one. It's much faster. So once you buy a horse, you go to the Ecri, which is where they'll send it, and then you can take it out. The first thing to do when you look at your horse is press P, click the horse and see if it needs feeding. If it does, go to the grocery vendor in town or try and pick some cabbages or something and feed your horse. Now get on and ride. So as you ride your horse, you will unlock the riding skill, which every single player in the game needs. And then within about a minute, you'll fall off your horse because you have a low riding skill. So you want to ride your horse around as you're doing everything else we talk about to level up your riding skill. The next thing you should do is open up your pet window again with P and look at these pet commands. You have pet follow, pet stay and open pet bags. They're the three most important ones for managing a horse. If you get off your horse and you go to fight something, you don't want your horse following you into battle. Alternatively, if you are trying to get away from someone, you want your horse to be following you so you can get back on it and get away. So controlling the pet, uh, feeding the pet, they're the two most important things. The next one is pet bags. So if in Haven you taught to the trainer and you learned pet equipment crafting, you can create your own bags. So you can create small horse bags out of leather that you got from the pigs from your pig task. If you didn't learn this in Haven from the, the pet trainer, you can just go to any library and go to the crafting trainer in the library and buy the pet 
bag book and then the pet equipment book will let you craft horse bags and you only need level one in the skill to make a basic horse bag. Failing this, you can go buy one off the broker, uh, which is like the auction house, for usually under one gold a bag. So if you really don't want to get involved with this, you can just buy one. I think I spent my first few months in this game just buying horse bags off the broker. Now, I would keep doing these graveyard tasks. I would still go out either naked or with the basic gear you get in the graveyard. I wouldn't spend any money on gear. Maybe you can buy a sword if you want, but I'm just using my starter sword and just keep taking these basic graveyard tasks. But instead of just going back when you finish it, so if it tells you to kill five walking deads, don't just go straight back. What you want to do is butcher every single body that you can. And we're going to scale up from earning one gold a trip to earning five plus. So yeah, the horse can carry like 500 kg or more depending on the horse. So just keep filling it with more and more stuff. And if you, if you are unlucky enough to get attacked in these early stages, it does happen. You haven't lost much. You won't have any gear. You won't really have any, any weapons or anything worth losing. You might lose your horse, but as we've seen, we can earn that very fast with these tasks. So going back to town, if we sell all of the bone tissue, all of the, the heads, all of the meat, everything we got, we get 10 gold, which is a huge improvement on the one to two gold we were getting per trip. Now, if you chose to do this, or if you went and did scoundrels or some other task, then you'll have earned a little bit of money and you'll have unlocked the more challenging things like scoundrels and bandits. I personally would go straight to bandits when you can, but you can do scoundrels. They're in like the sewers or they're in like small little uh, outposts around the, the cities. But the big thing is to work up to bandits. That's, that's what I'd be trying to do. And where we scaled from earning one gold in the in the graveyard to earning 10 golds with our horse, we need to scale again and we have to reinvest to get there. And you can't be fighting bandits with, with really weak skills in, in terrible armor or no armor. So I would try and buy something basic off of the broker. So if you're a foot fighter, maybe try and get some malarium or a Malgi. In most towns, this is like 50 silver to a gold each. It's really cheap. A basic set will set you back like three or four gold. If you're a crafter, you could craft something out of, again, the same sort of materials that you were getting in the graveyard. And then I would try and buy a weapon as well, such as a two-handed bone sword or something like that. Uh, mages, you would do the same, but you would buy lighter armor because you need uh, mana regen. And you would hopefully have been leveling up your spells so that your, your outburst is now hitting for more. Your basic spells are hitting for more because you've leveled your mental training, your mental focus, things like that. So... Hopefully now you're in a position where you feel a little bit more powerful. Maybe as a mage, you've also got a dagger or some other fast weapon. I don't know, whatever build you're playing, archery. Hopefully you've got something now where you feel a little bit stronger. Once we get here, you're going to you're gonna look pretty cool. You're going to have this, this, this plate bone armor or you're going to have the, the cool mage armor. But there's going to be an issue as a new player. You're going to have to look into armor weight. And armor weight is a, a very important system in Mortal Online. And if we look in our statistics right now, we bought this very, very basic set and it weighs 12 kg, but we can only wear 6 kg. So we have a little debuff at the bottom of our screen, the, the little one on the bottom right, which shows that we're being weighed down. When you're weighed down, you cannot ride a horse and you are slow at moving. So what we need to do is you need to level our armor training. This is a skill in your action skills. Every single class needs to level their armor training. Doesn't matter if you're a mage, you need it for the basic mage gear. So what you wanna do is take out your weapon and just run. As you run with your weapon out, you will level up your armor training. So your armor will stop you being able to ride your horse. So what I would do is take off what you what you can't wear until you are in a weight that you can wear. So for me, it was taking off the chest and the legs and I could I could run around and jump around. Grab some food from a local cabbage patch or garden if there is one in your town or buy some from the from the grocery vendor so you can feed your horse because we're going to go out and find some bandits. Now on your map, you will have a heads up display that shows you where the bandits are and head out to them. They're the little, little uh, helmet icon and go find some bandits. There is also a, uh, if you, if you, if you search for mortal online map, you will find like an interactive third party map, which you can use if you want to. And there you can find where all the big bandit camps are located. But the big thing is just pick a direction and leave. This is, this is all about exploration. It's, it's about finding stuff around you. So you can use that site. You can, you can follow your heads of display, or you can just pick a direction and ride. Some places will have scoundrels, some places will have bandits, some will have challenging bandits like veteran bandits, bandit casters, bandit leaders. And each, the, each, the, the higher the challenge of the thing you're fighting, the more gold you will make. So just travel around and try and find these camps. As you get off your horse, remember to re-equip your gear uh, and just play overweight. It doesn't, you, don't, you won't be running away from things here. And these things might feel challenging. And if they do, they're supposed to. You, you know, things are supposed to feel harder and the, the, the skill cap just increases. So... You've got to put yourself out there and keep trying them. Maybe if bandits feel too hard, stick to scoundrels. Once they feel easy, head to bandits and you will slowly progress your skills, your gold and your confidence. And this is honestly what I recommend. You should try to focus on your gameplay loop being in the, in the early game. You're still in the early game. 
I would focus on this, going out, trying to find new things, fight everything you see, fight razorbacks, bears, bandits, scoundrels, tribrats, everything around you that you can fight, go fight, and then go hand these tasks in. And you can see here just how much more we get. We get so we get like five gold, a ton of glory, and you can start to level up your character. So you can start to progress your clade points. So you can you can start getting those better skills. So I was playing as a Vila foot fighter, so I could start picking up my high movement speed abilities. And when you come back to town, you will have much more to hand in. So I was I focused on fighting bandits, so I could trade in all of these all of these heads, all of these gems that the bandits were dropping. I made a good chunk of gold. Now, if you want to focus on crafting, if you want to focus on the hunting tasks, just do the same, but with, with, the, with the hunting. So you can go out and fight bush pigs and then go out and fight bears. And no matter what you're fighting, if it's animals or bandits, you will be getting something. Either you'll be harvesting and butchering and getting, you know, furs and leathers, or you'll be getting gems and scrolls from bandits. So let's talk about the auction house. As you start scaling up and progressing, we've bought basic stuff off of off of the off of the broker. But let's start selling. So when you look to sell something, you can search for it and see what it's selling for, and then list the item for sale. Or you can search for a buy order. You can see here I had a, I had a greater heal scroll. It wasn't selling very well. You can just drag this into a buy order and make a gold. As simple as that. I've got another scroll here for Thunderlash. You can see here it's selling for about ninety silver. You can list it, put it up and put it under the current price. This is a really good way to make money at, as a new player is to see what's in demand and sell it. It works really well if you're butchering animals or if you're getting rare drops off of, off of bandits. And as you start to get more confident and you go on these little roams outside, you can start buying yourself nicer equipment. You can reinvest this money you're making to kill these bandits faster and to prevent yourself dying as hard. You can see here I'm wearing some very, very basic gear. It's called Arthropod. Um, it's made from spiders and you can just buy it off the broker extremely cheap. So every, depending on what region you're playing in, they will have cheap mid game or early mid game armor. And that's kind of it. That's This is the play style I would try and have for the next day. I would literally just try and keep going outside, fighting bandits, taking tasks, discovering different parts of the map, making gold, and, and and dying because as part of this this the, the wins and losses you'll take on this early game journey you will finish off your build and that's what we need to talk about you need to try and max out your stat points so you can see here i finished my strength dex and constitution just by fighting you can press the pluses and minus here to, to tailor them if you're a footy you want to focus on strength dex and constitution if you're a mage intelligence and psyche and a hybrid would be somewhere in between you can plus and minus these and move them around freely and just fighting and using magic will increase them naturally and then you need to focus on your skills. We've already talked about armor training and riding, but also try and level up your other skills. So if you want to have mounted archery, go and find where the books are. It might be on the broker. It might be in the library. Majors, you need to level your mental focus, your mental training. If you wanted to get into, say, necromancy or elementalism, this is the time to start earning the money to buy those books and, and leveling them up as you, as you play and you, you do these tasks. But this is where you start focusing on your skills. And if you've got, if you've run out of points, so you get 1,100 points, if you start running out, you can press remove level to, to degrade those skills and get more points back. So if in Haven you took swords, clubs, hammers, spears, and you've got 30 points in them all, you can de-level all the ones you don't want and get those hundreds of points back. Nothing is permanent in the skills. You can freely move them around forever. I'll link a video down below of uh, five really good meta builds right now, which is which if you're not sure what build to play in, you want to follow like something more tailor made. I also have a website where I have lots of different builds. So tamers, uh, mounted archers, paladins, death knights. I'll, I'll link that website down below. I've got lots of builds on there. So if you're not sure where to put these points as you're doing these quests and you're you're going out in the world, it's a really good time to 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 tailor make your build and spend these points. The next thing I want to talk about is a new feature added to the game called dynamic spawns. This is not necessarily a new player thing, but it's just something I want to warn you about. There are these things called uh, dynamic spawns. As you can see, as you ride through the through the area, things just pop out the ground. If you're in a in if you're close to town, outcasts will spawn. If you're further away, outlaws will spawn, and even further, you will get veteran outlaws. Now, these are challenging mobs, and my advice to you as a new player is to run. If outcasts were to spawn on you, try and fight them. If outlaws or veteran outlaws spawn and you're not confident with bandits, I would run from these. I would ride away. 
because they're they're pretty tough and there are big complaint from from new players as a veteran player these are incredible to me because they're 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 fun they add something to the world they you get a lot of gold for beating them and they drop very rare and expensive items so as as someone who can fight them they're a great addition but as a new player there's something to really worry about and be aware of and we see a lot of complaints from new players when they when they get killed by these maybe you're at a at a small town at a small like outpost checking out a chest and one of these spawns and traps you in a room maybe you're riding through somewhere your horse is low on stam and they spawn all around you so these are just something to watch out for and be aware of when you are feeling confident and your build is better and you feel stronger definitely fight these though because they give as you see a lot of glory and they drop these rings rings are the, the chase item of the game as they don't drop on death and if you're lucky enough to get a rare ring you can sell it for thousands of gold so yeah my advice as a new player is when you start seeing these outlaw tasks or out veteran outlaw tasks would be to avoid them until you're confident with bandits and then when you're confident 100 percent fight these because they are a game changer okay now we need to talk about the criminal system and reputations because this is a single server full loop pvp game so what are the rules of PvP? What are the rules of, of criminal actions? So press N to turn on criminal actions and then you can attack another player. If you attack another player, you go grey. If they attack you, they go grey. If the person who is grey kills the person who is blue, you can report them for a murder. Getting over 10 murders makes you a murderer and your name goes red. So if you attack another player and go grey, your name will stay grey for a couple of minutes and guards will attack you. Guards in towns, guards in player towns, any sort of guard tower with any sort of guard will attack you as a grey player. If you go red, you can never enter a town. Over time, those murders go down. But while ever your name is red, guards in every town other than the, the, the criminal towns will attack you. But don't let that put you off PvP in this game. It, PvP is incredibly fun and fighting against other players is a lot more fun, in my opinion, than fighting against the, the AI bandits. So I, I would definitely say don't be scared to get into fights, but just be, be wary of where you are. Don't fight in towns. Don't fight near towns where the guard towers are. Don't fight near player towns if they can just run into their town and, and turn the guards on you. Just be, be wary of your situations, but don't be afraid of, of getting into fights. And everything we've talked about so far has been, it's been like a requirement. It's been building up to a hundred gold so you don't have gear fear. It's its how to ride a horse, how to increase your armor training so you can actually wear armor and go out and fight, how to increase your skills, how to sell stuff on the broker. It's all things that kind of everyone needs to know. Mages, footies, hybrids, archers, everyone needs to know these basic things. But once you, once you get to this point where you are going out in the world, you're, you're leveling and you're, you're growing as a character, it's time to decide who do you want to be. This is a sandbox game where your reputation is everything. You can choose to be a good guy. You can go to these bandit camps and these, these, these different areas and these points of interest and make friends with the people that live nearby. There are houses near everything and you can make friends with them. Maybe you can, maybe you like the look of a forest or you like the look of a, a town and you want to join a guild in that town and live out of that town. It's time to talk to people and make friends and, and you, you can go on the official discord and there's a guild recruitment section or you can just talk to the people in game and just decide what you want to do and where you want to go in this game. Maybe you want to be a nomad and you want to go down to the jungle and look at all the different go up to Hispelia in the in the snowy mountains and just explore or you want to be a master crafter. Maybe you want to spend your entire time uh, learning how to make the best swords and all how all the different metals work and refining and mining and you want to go into that whole system. That's, that's completely fine. A lot of people completely throw themselves at the crafting in this game. But the important thing to know is once you've got the basics down, this is your, it's your journey, it's your sandbox, and you can do whatever you want in this game. This, this was just a basic guide of how to get over that initial hurdle, that, that great filter of knowledge of, of where to go, what to do, and what you should prioritize. But yeah, I, I just hope this helped some people along the way. I was definitely intimidated the first time I played this game, and I just wanted to I wanted to make sure that more people gave this game a chance and, and if this if this video helps one person get through that initial fear and find what's special about the game which doesn't come for a while until you get your confidence then then i'm i'm happy if this video has helped and you've you've learned something along the way let me know down below because because I, I really hope it it's 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 been worth it's been worth making for people and if you have any other tips for new players let them know. Alternatively, if there's any other guides you want to see, like a full mage guide, like how to make a, a banging end game mage, let me know because I, I play a lot of mages. If there's any crafting guides you want, let me know. But that's it for this video. I've, I've spoke for way too long. I'm, I'm going to wrap it up here. 
I'll link everything I mentioned down below. If you got this far, subscribing to the channel helps me out a ton and, and lets me know that this was well received. But thank you. Thank you all for watching and I'll, I'll catch you in the next one.